All right, how's it going, everyone? Welcome to the stream. Uh, we are just waiting on some more people to join us. Well, let me just get up some. Hope you guys are having a good day. Ready to do some learning? All right, let's get. Um, there we go. All right, that is good. Brightness up. Yo, what up, Corb? I can give you an example of the cognitive dissonance theory. That is something that I can do. But we're going to wait. We'll wait until we get more people on before I, I do that thing. You're also actually going to watch a YouTube a video on that cognitive dissonance theory because we did not have time for it in class, but we will have time for it here. I know this is something that uh, people struggle with, so... Okay. All right, all right, all right. Okay, cool. Well, I'm ready to rock and roll. Gonna wait for some more people on. Throw up some questions for me, guys, so I know. Uh, what I need to tackle. Ooh, that's what I need to do. I need to post this link. Saul, you are three minutes too late to be first, my friend. Three minutes too late. That's OK. We're glad you're here anyways. Um, okay. All right, video is up on All right, notes are up. Oh, video is up on Schoology. All right, so uh, Corb, let me just get to uh, cognitive dissonance theory naturally. I will cover, I will obviously cover that um, when we get there. Um, but as of this moment, um, I'm just going to kind of like start from the beginning. So. Just so I'm good. Yeah, yep, lots of examples. I got plenty of examples for that. That is fine. So, okay, cool. All right, well, we got enough people on. Let's uh, let's rock and roll. So, okay, let's do it to it. So, first things first, we are um, obviously doing motivation and motion, looking at um, you know, why we do the things that we do, what is the, um, what's the purpose, what is the, what's the, what's the driving fat 
what's the driving force behind the things that we do. So, uh, sorry, I'm trying to get my my stuffs ready to go. Okay, so let's just get to it. Um, easy stuff to 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 get going with. All right, so uh, what moves people into action? What gets us going? All that jazz. Um, so we've got uh, instincts first. Um, so as it says here, an innate, typically fixed pattern of behavior in animals in response to certain stimuli. Uh, easy enough, guys. We're just looking at how um, creatures react or how humans react to uh, certain things, but it's something that is unlearned, something that um, is typical for them, innate, innate, unlearned. That's a big, it's the big term here. It's the big um, idea is that these are things that um, aren't taught to them. They just, it's something that they're able to do. So uh, examples uh, might be, uh, you know, birds migrating south or any sort of migratory animals. Um, oftentimes they just know how to do it. Um, without being taught so and they know you know when what time of year you know they don't have a calendar or anything to go by they just do it so bam to Saul, what's up you said you typed in four what does that mean okay so let's go to drive reduction theory Okay, so drive reduction theory. Remember, uh, don't forget uh, names. Oh, you're good, that's all. Uh, don't forget names. Uh, Clark Hull is going to be our, um, is the guy that put together this idea of drive reduction theory. Um, uh, and he applied it, he uh, intentionally, attempt, initially attempted to apply it to a lot of things, um, but uh, in the end, it really is just a focus on our physical traits it's not uh, or our physical uh, needs um, it's not going to deal with our uh, you know emotional wants or our um, feelings and stuff like that it really is just uh, talking about um, uh, things that we need can you explain multiple approach avoidance conflict I can do that I can't do that let me get to let me get there uh, Peyton I will get there okay so uh, after that, we've got the drive reduction theory. Um, so, as we as we know, the big the big factor here, the big idea that we're looking uh, looking at. Take take care of it, Corbin. You got it. I mean, you can if you want to. But um, so, big thing with the drive reduction theory, you've got this homeostasis, you've got this uh, balance, this equilibrium. You're good, you're Gucci, and then you're not, and then you lack something. You need something. So there's need, there's drive, there's motivation to act. And these are all physical things. Everything here is we're talking about physically, okay? But in the end, drive does not um, uh, does not deal with decision making. In the end, you make the decision. Just because you're hungry does not mean that you're going to eat. Just because you're thirsty doesn't mean you're going to drink, okay? So drive reduction theory, dealing with people or dealing with physical needs, Clark Holt. All right, arousal theory. So. Yep. Yeah, but it's a little bit more than that to solve. It's like making a choice between two or more goals uh, that have both multiple that have both multiple pros and cons. Corbin, you don't mean that. Um, yeah, Corbin, uh, multiple pros and cons. So uh, it's like choosing what um, what kind of dog to get. You know, there's going to be lots of different pros and cons. You got to take care of them. Uh, they might mess up the house. They might do this. They might do that. But they're really nice and cuddly, and they help you exercise, and they help you. Um, you know, if you're single, they might help you get a date, stuff like that. So there's lots of pros and cons, and so all this multiple approach avoid conflict is just saying like there's lots of stuff. Well, uh, that's that's a that's a good middle ground, I guess, Corbin. Okay, so arousal theory. Okay, simply put, arousal theory states that we seek optimum levels of excitement or arousal. We are looking for that perfect 
level of excitement. So Mr. Monk today came home. Uh, what did I do? I ran with Teddy, and then I was taking a nap right now. And then I put in shelves in my house. It was not very exciting. Uh, so uh, my optimum level of excitement was not reached today. I did not, you know, I didn't, I didn't go skydiving. Uh, so, um, so that means I'll, I will probably be looking to do that later on, you know, or something exciting like go drag racing or something like that. Optimum levels of arousal or excitement. I will be doing none of those things, but uh, just give you an idea. Okay, uh, York Dodson curve, this graph tells you everything. Your performance letter level is, ooh, excuse me, I'm about to sneeze. Ooh, right, I got my uh, mute button on right on time. Okay, so um, when we are about to sneeze, um, okay. Uh, when we're looking at this Yerkes, the Yerkes Dodson curve, performance is dictated by stress. Not enough stress, we're not going to perform very well. We get just the right amount of stress, we're going to do really well. And if it's too much stress, we're going to be overworked. Now, this is completely dictated by the person. Like some people do really well. Thank you, Calvin. Some people do really well under high amounts of stress. Um, and um, are able to perform at their best. Think of like professional players that do their best when the pressure is on. Um, and some people uh, struggle with even just a little bit too much stress. This is going to be. This is a very general um, curve uh, that you. I mean, that we all understand is not uh, is not accurate exactly to every person, but it is general. Is there a specific name for your personal optimal production? Um, no, not that I know of. So I definitely won't quiz you over that. So I don't think there is to solve. Good question, though. Okay. Uh, all right, next, cognitive dissonance theory. Okay, so you guys are going to have to help me out um, uh, because I know that the cognitive dissonance theory was something that um, – there's a lot. There's just a lot going on. Um, so here, <laughs> if you want to, let me let me show you my notes on cognitive dissonance. So I I, I have a lot of stuff here uh, because this is like if you if you come back and you look at York Dodson like in arousal theory like it's just super simple cognitive dissonance this is like oh, i got so much stuff on here uh okay so uh and this just shows you that i i'm this is something i recognize students uh struggle with okay so people send tend to seek con consistency in their beliefs and perceptions so what happens when one of our beliefs are, conflicts with another belief so this this phrase right here this concept right here is key People tend to seek consistency in their beliefs and perceptions. We want things to stay the same. We want things to be uh, like together, okay, and, and to make sense. Now, what happens in daily life is we run into contradictions to our beliefs, and that really messes uh, with like – you know, the way that we um, understand what's going on in the world and, you know, what we what we think. Sorry, I'm having to move out of um, full screen so that I can see you guys' comments. Forget it because of the example you did in class, Mr. Monk. Oh, that's good. What is you miss? We'll get there, Ian. Email me at... Oh. Okay, good work, Josh. Yo, Josh, hit me up. No, you have to e you have to email him to solve. Josh, you may want to put your uh, Josh95 at Gmail or at, uh, at you know something like that. So, and thank you for that doing that, Josh. That's nice of you. Okay, so current term cognitive dissonance is used to describe the feelings of discomfort. Okay, so cognitive dissonance. 
okay? We're talking about mental and then dissonance, okay? Feelings of discomfort. So the feelings of discomfort is, is looking at this dissonance, okay? Discomfort. Um, uh, that result from holding uh, two conflicting beliefs, okay? Uh, when there is a discrepancy between beliefs and behaviors, something must change in order to eliminate or reduce this dissonance. Okay, so you have these two beliefs, uh, either, you know, it might be two beliefs or it's a belief in some behaviors and something has to change so that we can go back to, uh, we can reduce that dissonance. Okay, that conflict, that feeling of discomfort. Okay, so um leon festinger is the guy who's who did it this is all like his stuff uh some examples okay um i'm just gonna read this out uh, yeah i'll just read this out loud for those of you who can't who have trouble reading it or seeing it uh cognitive is blah 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 blah, blah uh but is particularly evident in situations whoa uh where an individual's behavior conflicts with beliefs that are integral to his or her self for example Consider a situation in which a man, so here's our example, which a man who places a value on being environmentally responsible just purchased a new car and he later discovers uh, does not get great gas mileage. So a person needs a new car, gets a new car, they're environmentally conscious, they're like, hey, I really, you know, you know, I really want to protect the world. Um, and then they get a car that like gets terrible gas mileage. Okay, so here's the conflict. It is important to the man to take care of the environment. However, the person is driving a non environmentally friendly uh, truck. So we've got, here's our two, here's our conflict. This is what's causing dissonance. So in order to reduce the dissonance between uh, belief and behavior, he has a few choices. Okay. So once again, um, and I was trying to stress this, uh, the, when we were talking about this, there's not just one way of solving this dissonance of, reducing this distance you could do this in any uh, lots of different ways okay so you can sell the car and purchase another one that gets better gas mileage so that would you know go with the environmentally friendly side or you can reduce his emphasis on environmental responsibility okay yeah you know i think the environment's really important but you know maybe not not as important you know drive you know uh, just one person dr and you know driving a gas guzzling car it can't isn't hurting it that much okay in the case of the second option his distance could be further minimized by engaging in actions that reduce the impact of driving uh, his car so he you know he then goes out and he's like all right well i'll i'll use the um uh, public transportation more often or ride my bike to work or something like that okay um let me let's go back uh cognitive dissonance is there any is that example work here let me post a um let me post a video uh, video is kind of sketchy what do you guys think uh, throw me some throw me some comments in the in the chat where are we at i got a bunch of people on here i want to guys what i, I want to know if you guys are feeling comfortable with the cognitive dissonance theory Holla at you, boy. Be good. Josh, you good. Josh, you good. Mm-hmm. Uh, we won't be tested on transcendence and the ones we did not No, no to all. Yeah, I'm not uh, the only like any sort of uh, humanistic or uh, the hierarchy of needs questions will be pretty general. Uh, they will not be like super, super specific. Uh, so it'll be like safety needs, you know, are safety and um, physical needs you'll know need to be at are at the bottom and so i any sort of question might might stem from those so um okay cool everyone's pretty comfy with this uh so pretty much having two choices that butt heads and one has to change yeah yeah you have to make it could you give an example of an approach avoidance theory uh yeah so let me uh let me keep going i'm just going to keep moving forward sarah and and i'll get to that when i uh 
uh, in a little bit when I hit that a little bit later. So give me give me a minute. Okay, so that's cognitive dissonance. Okay, so uh, uh, yes, the Sarah, uh, Josh, just even though he randomly said drugs, that's <laughs> that's a good example, Josh. I don't think we're supposed to be shouting drugs, talking about drugs out here, unless, oh no, I guess we can. Or bringing on, or eating, bringing on fast food, yeah, or eating fast food, it's another good example. It's good, it's, it's tasty, but it's not very good for you, so it's a good, yeah, good things and bad things about it. Okay, uh, here we go. Okay. Uh, Maslow's hierarchy of need. You may remember Abraham Maslow. Uh, know his name. Um, be familiar with him. He looks like such a jolly fellow. Uh, here is his hierarchy of needs. The lower needs must be met before an individual can strive to meet higher needs. Um, uh, we didn't really talk about this uh, altruistic behavior. Um, Altruistic behavior is uh, doing uh, something for another person's uh, well-being uh, with no expectation of uh, return. So I am doing something kind for someone else with no expectation that I will get something back. Um, I, you know, I, I'm. Um, I help a grandma walk across the street and I'm not doing it because I hope to get a pat on the back from somebody. I'm just doing it because that's, you know, that's the kind of person that I want to be, or that's the, you know, that's the sort of kindness that I want to show. Um, so, um, so yeah, uh, easy peasy. Uh, all right. So, okay. So I am, I'm, I'm, I'm on my home computer. So I totally don't know if I have all of the – oh, no, no, I do. Um, hold on. Um, okay. Yeah, okay, okay, we're fine. All right, good, good, good. Okay, so uh, very quickly – Incentive theory, uh, this is the need for goal achievement or attainment. Um, w once again, we're diving into the social motives. Um, uh, oop. Uh, ooh. Uh, and can you please go over the justification, over justification theory? What, the justification theory? You weren't able to explain it in class. Do we need to know all of the hierarchy? Uh, no, not specifically. Yeah, thank you, Josh. Um, j yeah, just general. Uh, yeah, like the main five. Yes, Sana, that's that's exactly what I. Y you'll need to know, like the, um, like esteem and, um, no, let's go back. Uh, like self actualization, esteem, safe, uh, belongingness, love needs, safety, biological, physical. Yep. Okay. So intrinsic needs. Um. So intrinsic needs, uh, this is, uh, I am, uh, let's see, I am uh, running my dog, Teddy, uh, because it makes me feel good. I, I'm going out and exercising. Um, I know that it's good for him, and so that makes me feel better. It makes me feel like I'm a better dog owner, um, and so I am motivated to do that thing um, because, you know, it just makes me feel good. Okay, or extrinsic motivation. Um, I uh, take my dog Teddy for walks uh, because I am hoping to uh, meet cute girls out on the road, and they'll be like, "Oh my gosh, your dog is so cute." And I'll be like, "Yes, you know, can I please have your number or something like that?" So I'm looking for some sort of uh, outward reinforcer for what I'm doing, um, and no, that has not happened at all yet. So. Um, maybe I'm just not rock walking around in the right places because Teddy's pretty cute. Um, so yeah, intrinsic, extrinsic motivation. You guys are good with that. Uh, over justification. 
over justification effect. All right, Josh, how'd you do? When a person with an intrinsic motivation to do something and is then given an extrinsic motivation to do the same thing, uh, then uh, they often don't do that thing. Yes, very good. Okay. Uh, Cor Corbin, how could I be lonely with you guys? You guys are great. I am definitely, definitely not lonely. Yeah, because it's impossible for you, Mr. Monk. Calvin, I'm just going to pretend like that was not a slight on me, that you were just being helpful. Just all that look, that little thing, you keep retracting, but that looked like a, a sneeze, like he was about to sneeze or something. Is that what that was? That little emoji? Okay, so um, let me give a couple examples of the over-justification effect. Um, um, let me think. Oh, why did, I think I had this one on a quiz, uh, but um, no, that's not bullying. <laughs> yeah, that is bullying. Yeah, Calvin, don't be mean to me. Uh, can you give it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I got you, Rishi. Uh, so over-justification effect basically um, – you have a baseball player, and the baseball player's you know loves playing baseball. He plays for like his high school. He plays for club. Like it's great. It's a lot of fun. And then he goes to college, and at college he's like, like baseball becomes everything. Like he has like two day practices. He has to. Um, you know, go to all these like baseball specific events. There's all this pressure and like very quickly it's moving away from like, I'm doing this game. Be oh, get him, Teddy. Um, I'm doing this game because I'm, I love it because I'm super excited about it because it just makes me feel good to you're playing this game because you have to, you know, we gave you a scholarship. So you have to live up to these expectations. You have to help us win these trophies and blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden I'm not doing this because I love it anymore. I'm doing it because I've got all this pressure coming down on top of me. Um, and so, yeah, so, so that, so, blah. so is that a good example? Does that make sense for you, Rishi? Um, uh, can you give it – or Allison, is that okay? Um, yeah, give me a thumbs up if you guys are, are doing okay. Uh, reading – you yeah, Josh, that's a good example. Reading, you used to love it, but now that you have it for a grade, you hate it. Yeah, uh, and you get that with writers too. Uh, writers are just like, oh, I love writing poetry and all this stuff, and then you get to class, and it's just like, oh, I have to write for this. Boo. I don't want to do this anymore. So. Okay. Uh, Allison, I need a thumbs up from you because you asked the question. So, I'm going to move forward. And Allison, if you have a question, you can come back and you can ask me. So, because you're not, you're not giving me a thumbs up. Okay. Uh, so that is. Incentive theory. Okay, thank you. Good, 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 good. Okay, so uh, that is incentive theory. Uh, not incentive theory. Sorry. That is the overjustification effect. Uh, is which which good? Ah, oh, Corbin, that's a great question. Um, it's okay. Uh, I, uh, Arian, I mean, it's Dees. <sighs> Their sandwiches are good, but they're, they're like overpriced and um, – I don't know. I don't know. It's it's good. I I sometimes kind of have an upset stomach over it uh, afterwards. I think there's like it's too rich. There's too much <laughs> flavor. I don't know. Uh, it's okay. Uh, this is I have no I have I never bought this. So they are overpriced. I've never bought I never bought this. So I don't know where I got this from, but I have it. So <laughs> Rishi shush. <laughs> I've uh, I I I tread I I tried to tread pretty pretty carefully. Uh, no no. Oh, Subway is better. Aryan, what are you? What is wrong with you, son? No, it is not better. Subway is 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 passable at best. Subway is passable at best. Okay, so um, let's transition to. 
Alex is here, guys. All right, we can continue with the stream. We were worried, but now that Alex has made it, we're, this is exciting. Alex, good to have you. Good to have you. All right, so uh, what else do I need to talk about? Uh, okay, so real quick, uh, I need to talk to you about affiliation. Remember, affiliation is the need to be a part of group. Uh, of the group, uh, we I was just using the example of um, you are um, you move to a new city. What's the first thing that you really want to get a part of? You want to be a part of a group, uh, and just recognize that that is a, a a major motivator for human beings. We want to be um, a part of what's going on. Thank you, Sana. We're keeping keeping up. Whoa, what is uh? Josh, Arya needs to say, it is only $6 for a foot long. Yeah, but they're not that great. Uh, this all, that, we all know that happened, okay? We don't need to keep bringing it up. Uh, so, yeah, no, Corbin, that, that does not count. Okay, so uh, after affiliation, we talked about power. Uh, like I said, desire to have impact uh, on other people. Uh, personalized power is like you—you uh, you have power because you of your position within the group. Like I am the CEO, or I'm the principal, um, or I'm the teacher in the school, and so I have my power is derived, and I use that power. The power that I use derives from my position, so um, so I could boss you around. Um, Aryan, we're moving on. Uh, so I'm using my position to overpower over uh, other people, or to impact or to influence other people. Socialized power motive is like I am a part of this group, and because I'm a part of this group, you know, we get to kind of do, you know, we get to have influence other people. So. Um, so like for for me uh um i have like the the young social studies teachers group uh so that's uh miss uh oh not miss uh mrs koopman uh coach diaz uh mr soto mr bachak uh miss bullock and myself were kind of like the i don't know we've all been teaching here for less than five years we're kind of the new um, I see us as the kind of the new group of social studies people. And so, I don't know, I feel like, yeah, see, see Cassie. Yeah. So we're kind of like, I don't know, we're, we're the crew. And so because we're part of this crew, I feel like, uh, like what? Like I got, I can boss people around cause I'm part of this crew, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty awesome group. We're, we're, we're like legit, like social studies teachers, like this, this non young group of social studies teachers. What? Koopman was uh, rookie teacher of the year. Diaz rookie teacher of the year. Bullock teacher of the year. Like just all around teacher of the year. So Kane's a little. He's my twin, but he's not like. He's married and has two kids, so he's not part of the like young crew or whatever. So, anyways, so that's so socialized power motive. That's probably not the best example but i just like those guys so i just wanted to give them like a, a shout out um uh but just you know working for like here we go corbin corbin worked for subway <laughs> at some point and so you know he gets to uh i'm not saying he's young arian but i'm not saying he's old he's older than i am go ahead arian i do not do not care so um Let's see. Okay, aggression, uh, presenting aversive stimulus to an unwilling victim. Just remember there are two types. Uh, the hostile is you're just doing it because it's an emotional thing, like I'm just so mad so I'm going to punch somebody. Uh, and then there is instrumental aggression. I am punching somebody because I want something out of it. I want um, them to give me their donuts or uh, someone's sandwich. Um, yep, so stuff like that. Bloop. Okay. Oh, no, what I just do.
All right, hold on. All right, well, so I accidentally just banned Dasol and Mozam. And Mozam, this is like your first time to like say anything in here, and I just banned you. I didn't mean to do that. Unblock. Okay, I can unblock you. Dasol, I will unblock you as well. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> All right. All right. Back on track. Back on track. Okay. So, um, okay. So those are the two types of aggression. Um, okay. <sighs> Motives of conflict. Uh, well, yeah, well, I banned you, Dissol. Okay, so motives of conflict, all right? So four types, approach, approach, avoidance, avoidance, approach, avoidance, and multiple approach, avoidance. So um, simply put, like, th these are really simple, guys. Approach, approach, you have two options that are super great, um, and you're just having to decide, you know, which of these two good options um, to take. Uh, I'm going to uh, go um, eat pizza or spaghetti. They're both delicious. They both have pasta. Um, not pasta. Uh, they both have cheese. Uh, they both have sauce on them. They're both delicious. So which of them to choose? So disciple. Uh, uh, difficult to uh, to make. Yes, Rishi, it was hostile aggression. My banning of them. Uh, avoidance, avoidance conflict um, is uh, I have two bad things that I have to choose from. So it's the lesser of two evils. I have to go uh, run two miles or I have to do uh, 50 push-ups. Those both sound terrible, but one of them I have to do. Um, I would choose the two miles over the 50 push-ups any day because push-ups are done. Uh, so approach avoidance, um, basically you have one decision. So approach approach and avoidance avoidance are like you have two options between choice between two options and then approach avoidance you have one option and you're having to like decide whether or not to do it um and um so what you, that decision is based on like the pro i mean it's just a pros and cons list uh like the you know um i want to uh cook dinner tonight well, cooking dinner means that I have to wash the dishes, I have to spend time putting the ingredients together, I have to read, like it takes time and energy. Um, and on the, flip hand, on the flip end, you have not cooking, oh, but, oh, excuse me, those are the good things. Um, but if you do, uh, you get to have a delicious meal if you cook it correctly, um, and you get to eat, and it's great. So and it's generally healthier than going out and eating. So there you go. Um, okay, and then finally, multiple approach avoidance. Oh, well, excuse me. That was more of a multiple approach avoidance uh, conflict, but uh, you guys got the point. All right. Hello, my name is Fadi. I'm just joining the stream now and asking questions like, what's going on on the quiz tomorrow? Uh, is it you give us a scenario and we say what like it theory it is or what um yeah something like that could going vegetarian for a healthy lifestyle but then you love meat be considered an approach avoidance conflict definitely and uh, and specifically sarah like a multiple approach avoidance there's lots of good things about becoming a vegetarian um and there's also lots of bad things about becoming a vegetarian uh so so yeah you're good Fadi. i'm just messing with you um yeah man that's i mean that's those are what all the quizzes are like so talking about the scenario, like giving you scenarios, um, there's a couple of questions that are um, just like, hey, what's this term and stuff? But yes, agreed, Calvin. Agreed. Okay. Um, all right. So then we went into motions. Um, let's see. Let's let's put this. I can show you my my little examples for emotion. Okay. Oh, no, not that one. Where is it? Let me pull this. Okay. All right. So, um, okay. So, let's start with the James Longa theory. All right. Emotional stimulus causes physiological reaction. Order of events. You see, the, you see the stimulus. You see the bear. You have a physical reaction. You do 
palms are sweating, knee, knees weak, arms are heavy, um, and then your brain processes it as emotion. You feel that emotion. Okay, James Longo theory, easy peasy. Okay, here's like a here is a, a diagram of that perception, physiological reaction, feeling of fear. Okay, Cannon Bard perception of the bear. You see the bear. You have the feeling of fear and the physical reaction at the same time. Good man, Rishi. Good man. Um, yep. You guys got it. Uh, yes, but only on his sweater. Okay. So good with this one. Order events, see stimulus, process, and react at the same time. Uh, do we need to know that the James Long uh, theory is mostly unaccepted? Um, it's I probably won't ask you something like that on the quiz, uh, but it's good to know, uh, Desal. Um, the only uh, what's interesting about the James Longa theory is that really the only um, aspect about it that we hold on to is uh, people that are paralyzed. So people who are paralyzed uh, generally don't feel emotions as strongly as um, as people who are not paralyzed. Basically. Um, like those of us who can have like have feeling in in their entire bodies like when we get angry it's like a full body experience you know we're just like we're almost like trying to keep our arms down from you know punching somebody um or if we're really happy you know sometimes it's like oh like i just want to dance or whatever but people who are paralyzed they're they don't get any of that feeling in their entire body. They only get it in their head. So any sort of anger is like this cold anger and any of this joy is kind of like subdued. Uh, and that points to the fact that the James Longa theory isn't totally dead. So, um, or isn't totally, um, non-existent okay um do we it's okay Arian. can i can write you a 500 page essay on the great Uma. calvin what are we talking about tomatoes yes uh do we need to know the Schachter and singer's experiment um no uh, it's just uh the theory yes uh the experiment is just a like it's just a way of explaining it um oh of the 184 men um Yes, to solve thingy majiggy majingi is the technical term. Um, I don't. I doubt I'll ask a question about it, like specifically that experiment. But I mean, you never know. It's good info, and it helps really explain what's going on. Um, so, uh, where am I going? Okay, so uh, Schachter Singer. Um, it's also known as the like the Schachter two factor theory. Um, it's just a name, another name for it. Uh, basically, once again, you it's kind of it's very similar to the Cannon Bard, where you see the stimulus, you see the bear, you uh, see the really um, attractive person, you have this cognitive appraisal, like this recognition of what you are seeing. Like, okay, I see the attractive person. Um, that is something that I like. Like I like people who are really tall or have lots of muscles or have red hair or something like that. Um, and so, um, so it's that recognition of, okay, that is something that I particularly like or particularly enjoy. And then after that, it's just like the cannon part. You have the physical reaction and you have the emotion right at the same time. Um, uh, that I'm sorry, I that I just explained cognitive appraisal. Sorry, that was the cognitive appraisal theory. My bad. Uh, did people just jump on? No, no one said anything yet. Um, so sorry about that. If that makes sense, um, that was the cognitive appraisal theory. Is the stimulus, cognitive appraisal, and then you, um, uh, and then you uh, s see the. Uh, you have the physical reaction and you uh, have the emotion at the same time. So um, the Schachter two factor theory is more like the uh, James Longa theory where it's the stimulus, um, cognitive appraisal, physical reaction, and then the, um, the emotion there at the end. So, okay. Uh, just know who, just know who Paul Ekman is and his universal facial expressions. Um, and you should be good. Um, you might want to know the, the original six. Um, I probably... 
Yeah. Thought, cognitive appraisal, sauna cognitive appraisal and thought are the same thing. Cognitive, mental, and then appraisal. You're like checking it over. You're thinking about it. Like when you see a uh, uh, like a diamond or something that you think might be expensive, you're going to like look it over. Uh, practice questions. Yeah, I'm done with all the content. Um, we just have some emotion, some stress to talk about tomorrow uh, with Hans Sali. Uh, okay, let me give you some practice questions. Give me a second. Let me pull up some some stuff. Mm. Okie dokie, artichokies. Okay. Um, uh, let's see if I can just put this on a thing so you guys can. Okay, uh, here we go. There you go. Answer that question for me. Ooh, let me let me go back and look at these. No, Arian, I will not do that. Uh, Sarah, the um, Cognitive label comes second. You have your physical reaction, and then you're reacting to that. I think I might have I might have flipped it. Yeah, yeah. I think I said. Uh, yeah, I just yeah. Sarah and Desol, I think I flipped it when I was explaining it. I was trying to get through it quickly. So my badsies. Okay, what we got here? Okay, now, let's take a step back, okay? Clark Hull, who are we, who's Clark Hull? See, this is a tricky one. Argued that all human motives, if we're talking about Clark Hull, all human motives. Yeah, some of you guys getting this. This is a tough one. You're intrinsic. Yes, biological. Hold on, who got that first? Aryan, way to go! You got that before. You got that before it was cool. Good job. Yeah, biological is what I'm looking for. Yeah, because it's because. Whoa! Hello, Teddy. No. Oh. Teddy wanted to say hi. Come here. Come here. Okay, hold on. Okay. He's very excited about something. Yes. Hello. Okay. Goodbye, Teddy. Okay. So let's go. Let's get you another question. Um. Oof. I throw. So you don't need. I don't know. Now that I'm doing this, I don't know why I'm. There we go. There's a easiest question of the century. If you don't know this, you're in so much trouble. I'm not even going to look at you guys' answers because I know you're going to get it right. Okay, here's another one. Abe Maslow. Biological. Yeah, hey, so here's the thing. Like, when uh, – uh, with that other question, like – Part of the reason why I put questions like that is you have to think outside – like you have to recognize – like you're right. I never use the word biological, but I am not the one that is um, writing your AP exam. 
Um, so let me hold on. Let me let me look y'all in the eyeballs while I'm doing this. I will not be making your AP exam. Some other random, like a group of random people are. So I have some very, like I have specific terminology that I use, but some other people might not use that. Like I use physical, but biological is the exact same. They're talking about the exact same thing. And so you guys have to get used to like, I use the word physical, but someone else might use biological, but, but, but they're the same thing. And like, I can't, um, I can't use every single word um, possible, um, uh, like uh, the Schachter two-factor theory. I use, uh, I call it the Schachter Singer theory, but someone else might call it the Schachter two-factor. Like I, I tell you guys about it, um, but I'm gonna use one specifically because otherwise, you know, I'm gonna go crazy. There's, you know, I just don't have all the time in the world to do that. Um, so, so yeah, yeah. I hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, okay, so let's come back down here. Yes, good, cognitive appraisal. Yeah, that cognitive label, cognitive appraisal, the way that they think about it. Um, yeah, thinking that bodily, bodily reaction is caused by a... Mm, no, Aryan, because... Um, no, it's... it's uh, the person's labeling of that physical reaction. That's what brings the emotion about. Yes. That's the, that's the key. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, I can. Oh, is my face back on here? My bad. My bad. I know you guys don't want to look at that. Okay, there we go. There we go. You're on. Okay. Um... Right. How about that? Okay, there's another one. Okay, so there's like three questions for you. Okay, yes, Jerk Stodson curve, easy peasy, homeostasis. No, 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 Fadi. These questions are a little too easy. You'll get, uh, you'll get some, uh, you'll get the, you'll get the uh, multiple choice on the quiz. Okay, yeah, I can give you a scenario, bud. Um, Here we go. All right, scenario incoming. Oh no, that's wrong. I just typed in the same thing. Hold on. Um, all right, there we go. Indiana Jones is your example. Yes, stimulus, physical response, and lastly, emotion. Very good. Good, 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 good. Easy peasy. Reagan, I'm glad you're on here. Who's all Who's all been ghosting here? Abby's here. Good. Aisha, you're here. Excellent. Allison and Abby, you're here. Good. Cassie was excited about Bullock. Arena, you're here. Excellent. Good. Mm. Yeah. Aryan, we're looking for uh, arousal theory. 
Yeah, he's a junkie. Yeah, so he's like, he's yeah, he's um, he's looking for his optimum level of arousal, which is like lots of it, lots of it. Okay, let me see. Oh, I just scrolled away from that. Let me see if I can get you one more. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah, optimal level. Okay. Um, let me see. What have we not? What have I not asked you about? Um, um, Harry, the baby. Uh, uh, is dropped into the pool. It's very sad. Dropped into the pool. Um, immediately, Harry, baby, rolls uh, over onto his back so that he can breathe. This would be an example of a what? Yep, that's an instinct. Yep, instincts. That is specifically the mammalian uh, diving reflex. Uh, and babies actually legit do this uh, if they get dropped into uh, water. They roll over. It keeps them alive. Okay, uh, it's 8.57, so you got three minutes. Any last questions? Any last thoughts, hopes, dreams that you guys need? Any last stiff? Uh, no, Fadi, I cannot put any more questions. No, Rishi, I will not give you the hardest question ever. Yes, son of the biological one. Okay, so. Clark Hole, all that all that question is talking about is the um, uh, uh, drive reduction theory. So it's a fancy it's a fancy way of asking uh, just about the drive reduction theory. Let me pull it. Let me pull that question back up for you. Um, and so. Um, Okay, so simply, Clark Hull argued that all human motives, okay, so once again, we're talking about motivation here, uh, from seeking love to desiring a raise or are extensions, extensions, not exactly what it is, but extensions of our biological needs. Because remember, Clark Hull was all about these physical needs, this drive reduction. We seek to reduce these specific drives, return to homeostasis, and all of that dates back to this concept of of our biology and uh, our biological needs. Yep. Um, cognitive dissonance. Okay, is hostile aggression, okay. Aryan, I don't know if that's a question. You just said something. If you have a question, I can answer it. Is hostile aggression directed towards only the person who made you mad or can it be directed toward anyone who just happened to be there? Uh, great question, Cassie. Yes, it can be directed towards anything. However, remember when we're talking about aggression, like it's, it is towards like some, I don't actually, I don't know what I was 
stipulating there. Yes, it could be to any anyone, um, but it is specifically emotional. So good question, Cassie. Yes. Uh, towards the end of the year, we need to have a live stream just to roast people. Uh, no thanks, Corbin. Um, TT! Yes, it is bedtime. That would be bullying, Corbin. You are totally right. All right. So, uh, that, uh, that sounds like that is Coitons. Coitons! I'm out of here. It is 9 o'clock. It is my bedtime. So I'm going to get out of here. So y'all have a good night. Don't forget to uh, look over some of your notes for tomorrow's quiz. Um, but 10 o'clock rolls around. You guys need to go to bed. Otherwise, good night. Uh, thank you for hopping on. I appreciate it. And we will see you all tomorrow.